Our next announcement is uh, something that I'm also very excited to talk about uh, and is very specific to this region, uh, to Ireland and to uh, the greater uh, Europe. Uh, you know, when we look around the world today, we're seeing how important collaborative innovation in open source really is. You know, the idea that anybody anywhere, no matter where they're from, no matter who they are, can participate both in the development and can use open source code to build anything they want is really important. At the same time, we see different regions around the world saying, hey, we want to have our own digital community. We want to have our own big digital economy, and we want to create new jobs, and we want to spur innovation regionally because of either the special circumstances of our region or because people here understand each other and able to collaborate more quickly. And so you kind of have this balance where, you know, open source is this free, organic, global innovation engine. And we kept asking ourselves at the Linux Foundation, how do we do both global work and address the needs of different regions. And today we're announcing uh, a new structure at the Linux Foundation, our Linux Foundation Europe entity. This is a organization based in Europe of European incorporation that will allow European organizations to participate regionally here and have reciprocity with the Linux Foundation globally around the world. In other words, you're going to be able to collaborate locally and cooperate globally at the same time. Here to introduce Linux Foundation Europe is our uh, Executive Director of Finos and new, need, new lead of LF Europe. We chose him because of his outrageous Italian accent, Gabriele Calambro. Come on, please. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Jim said, uh, you can probably hear my Italian accent. Uh, I'm Gabriele Colombro. Nice to meet you. Uh, and today, I'm going to focus on uh, how the Linux Foundation can help the European community. And I'm really excited uh, to have the chance to focus myself and the Linux Foundation more into the challenges and, and opportunities that Europe has. Um, I want to start with a little bit of history uh, that maybe helps you understand me uh, a little better and, and the focus that we'll have for Linux Foundation Europe. Um, yeah, I was young. That's actually where it all started um, 15 years ago here in Dublin. Um, yeah, uh, that's where I actually started uh, getting into open source. I was just fresh out of college, um, and I was going for my Apache Software Foundation address. I was trying to become a committer. I was really excited. Uh, you can totally see the excitement, a lot more hair on my head. But um, that's really where I started feeling sort of the romantic nature of open source, the passion that drove me to continue in this career. Um, and then I moved to Holland. I um, started developing SDKs, developer tools in the open, and I got hired for it. Um, I got, you know, working for a company called Alfresco out of Europe, an open source content management company. It was jet setting. They were sending me all over the world, and I, you know, clearly was enjoying, not, not entirely sure what I was doing there, but um, I was definitely enjoying the idea of being properly compensated for working in the open. It's just a freedom of you know, not only being able to work in the open, but also being fairly compensated for it. It's something that, candidly, the open source community is still grappling with 15 years later, sustainability. Um, and then I moved to the US. And as Jim said, I started running Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Um, without doing too much of a shameless plug, but what, we, what I've learned there is that bringing all the different constituents of the industry including regulators, including policymakers, uh, there is an advantage for each one to participate in the open source collaborative process. So why am I telling you that? It's because I firmly believe that these three natures of open source can coexist. Um, you know, I grew up in Europe, 
in, in a flourishing open source decade, and I still have a major passion for open source. Um, but that, it's not a dualism or a dichotomy with, you know, fostering lively ecosystems around open source projects that can ensure sustainability and proper compensation to individual developers. And of course, as Jim hinted to, especially here in Europe, uh, the collective value of open source, the social innovation, you know, the EU is a leader in many uh, of these topics. And so, as Jim said, today we're announcing uh, Linux Foundation Europe. Um, we have 15 plus members. I want to actually send a shout out to our uh, members. I know many of you are here in the room. Um, it's personally a major uh, pleasure to be able to focus on Europe, uh, an area that has, I think, major potential for innovation and leadership through open source. Uh, as Jim said, our tagline is collaborate locally, innovate globally. We want to make sure that we enable collaborations that can start here but then go to a global scale. You might be wondering, but isn't the Linux Foundation already in Europe? Well, clearly, <laughs> we're here. Uh, uh, but even further, more than a third of our members are from Europe. We're actually uh, pretty even split across regions. Um, we have more than 10 staff, uh, and we have several projects that are very Europe strong. Risk V, our open hardware initiative, is, is based out of Switzerland. LF Energy, OS Climate, they're very strong European representation. Um, and Finos itself, uh, my foundation, is half and half very much divided between Wall Street and uh, uh, Henry Wharf and the rest of Europe. So why are we launching today LF Europe? Well, there's, there's a couple of reasons. One, I think the first and foremost reason is that Europe is unique in terms of the sort of cross-border cross landscape, in terms of it's the only region in the world where there is a supranational entity that really uh, aligns goals and defines a collaboration framework that is sort of across borders. And so we realized that there was a need to support this type of collaboration. And as I said, Europe is a leader in uh, um, not just the EU, but Europe at large is a leader in promoting open source and really in some you know, policies that are sort of becoming standard setting across the world. Think about GDPR. Um, and so it's important to be able to nurture what starts here to go hopefully and look on a global scale. Um, th which brings me to, to my last point, which is, uh, you know, having grown up in Europe, I know that not only there is a, a huge grassroots community of open source contributors, but as I said, there are local priorities and local challenges they want to be able to address in Europe uh, to then bring them global. So what is exactly uh, Linux Foundation Europe? Um, as Jim said, it's an entity, a non-profit entity incorporated in Belgium. Uh, provides you know, a local asset ownership, so it allows to start projects in Europe, in the European territory. Um, that means that we can collaborate on open source, open hardware, open data, on projects that are either specific to a problem to Europe, think about the regulation, or there are, you know, where there is a very strong representation from European members. Um, Despite, as you've seen from our logos, all our inaugural members are from Europe and are a great representation of not just uh, tech companies, but vertical industries, nonprofits, policy organizations. Um, anyone, any organization can join Linux Foundation in Europe. As Jim said, we want to collaborate locally, but innovate globally. Um, and so in terms of of course, if you become a member of LF Europe, which is free for existing Linux Foundation members, you can start a project in Europe. You can join uh, what we'll be forming soon, our advisory board. Now, when we reached out with this value proposition uh, earlier in summer, and you know, as an Italian, I know that not much moves in summer, um, but you know, the response from our members has been overwhelming. Uh, uh, this really addressed real demand uh, uh, from our members. But, um, you know, don't take it from me. Uh, 
let me invite a few of our valued LF Europe members uh, to tell you why they joined uh, Linux Foundation Europe. So, Sachiko, can I, uh, Sachiko, sorry, I lost the, okay. Sachiko Muto, Chairman of uh, uh, Open Forum Europe, welcome. And then uh, Rob Oshana, VP of Software Engineering and R&D from NXP Semiconductors, welcome Rob. And then we have Vasu Chandra Sekara, who is uh, um, Vice President, Chief Architect at SAP. Welcome, Vasu. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, Phil Robb, who is Head of Edison Software Technology. Welcome, Phil. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll take my seat. So folks, thank you. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying the event already. Um, Hopefully you had a shorter trip than me because I'm pretty jet lagged. Um, a couple of questions, very quickly. I'll start with, with you, Phil, if that's okay. okay. Um, we have a very simple question for all the panelists. Why did you become a Linux Foundation Europe inaugural member? Well, for Ericsson, we've been growing our uh, open source activity for uh, quite a while now. And we continue to do that. And we've had a variety of um, opportunities to collaborate with uh, a handful of other um, uh, European entities on a given open source project, and we really didn't know where to home it. Um, you know, particularly when you want to try to engage with academia, uh, often there are grants associated for the academia to work in research on something interesting in open source. That becomes rather difficult when you say, okay, let's send all of that over to the US to do when all of the participants that are really founding it, that are really getting together, are in Europe. And that's been a struggle for us. So we're looking forward to this entity solving that problem. Very, very compelling. Um, Sachigo, I'll, I'll move to you. Um, same question. Same question. Yeah, so uh, for, for OFE, um, you know, this, this notion of um, uh, digital sovereignty is, is, uh, is, is, is being on the agenda in, in Brussels. And uh, we believe that open source offers a way uh, to enhance digital sovereignty um, by giving the user more control over um, their digital assets and sort of at the same time allowing them to benefit from international open collaboration. And so um, from our perspective, the, the establishment of LF Europe is, is really valuable because when we communicate with, uh, with policymakers and public, um, public sector officials in, in Brussels, but also in other European member states, um, we, we encounter a lot of uh, misconception about open source and, um, and just a lack of uh, knowledge, really. And so um, for us to be able to point to LF Europe membership and to, um, to show that, um, that major European players like, like Ericsson, like, like SAP and others, um, that they engage with open source and that they derive you know, benefit from, from that type of collaboration, that, that can open uh, a lot of doors for us and also gives uh, a lot of credibility to our message. So, so we're happy to, to, to support and happy to, and look forward to sort of seeing what comes out of this. And we're happy to have you on board. Um, Vasu, I'll, I'll move to you. Same question. Yes, yeah, so why did SAP become an inaugural member? Well, um, you know, the expectation is, is, is quite simple. You know, we think the Linux Foundation in Europe will establish um, a much needed infrastructure in the European jurisdiction um, in all things considering open source. Um, but um, yeah, let me maybe explain um, with a real world example. Uh, right, um, one where I was also personally involved in the decision-making yep. process. So two years back when uh, the whole COVID crisis started, uh, SAP was actually contacted by the German government uh, to you know, create a solution uh, in, with this idea of uh, a contact tracing app on mobile phones, yep. right? So yeah, we, we scrambled, we um, thought, uh, how can we do this? And it became immediately clear, you know, that um, we, we should open source such a solution, right? Not because of uh, the collaboration and the innovation um, benefits that we get, but uh, mostly, uh, and the key argument here 
was um, at full transparency because you need to have full trust of the public in such an uh, such an application yeah right and yeah we went ahead and uh, we created that application uh, it's today known as the corona Vaughan app yep. uh, but uh, back then we just didn't have a paved road, if you will, of infrastructure uh, on which we could actually travel on, right? So we had to create it uh, as, a, as a standard open source project. Yep. And, and mind you, even if you would have uh, suggested a neutral foundation, um, you know, the stakeholders, um, the key uh, sponsors of the projects um, were, was the German government, the health ministry, the Robert Koch Institute, and, yep. and so on. And if you would have proposed something outside the legal jurisdiction, just from a policy perspective, it would have not been would have not been accepted. So, yeah. Now with the Linux Foundation Europe, I think, uh, and and with many more of uh, these kinds of opportunities yep. for European public funded projects, yeah, yep. I think now we will will have a paved road and uh, actually a highway for, <laughs> uh, yeah for such projects, yeah, and that, that's why we welcome this, uh, this move of the European Foundation. Thank you, yeah. Lars. It, it is, uh, you know, if there's anything that the pandemic taught us is that, you know, we're definitely all connected. Yeah, and and so it, innovating globally uh, sounds about right. By the way, don't tell my American friends, but Europe dealt with the COVID passes and the Green Pass way better. I still have <laughs> this printed vaccine card, like handwritten, so whatever. Um, Last but not least, Rob, uh, from the NXP perspective, where yeah. did you guys join? Yeah, I think from, from our perspective, it's all around increasing uh, collaborative innovation. So yep. at NXP, we're driving a lot more innovation these days, and we believe with this foundation, it's going to enable us to participate in more, more projects in the areas where we're focusing. That's specifically automotive, obviously, but also industrial, yep. um, IoT, even edge processing, connectivity, and security. So. So we believe this is going to enable us to uh, drive more innovation in those key areas. So that's, yep. key, that's very important to us. And also, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, open source developers in Europe. Uh, yep. We have large populations in Romania, Czech Republic, France, Germany. And I think this is a great message for them as well, to, yep. have, to have this dedicated foundation out here now. So I think it's a good message for the developers, and it's going to help us drive innovation. Thank you, Rob. And thank you to all of you guys. I mean, you're an amazing representation of you know, the diverse set of membership that we're bringing into LF Europe. Um, let me go a little bit more specific with, with each of you. And Rob, I'll start back with you. Um, you know, Europe has a, has a strong history in open source software. Um, of course, you guys do a lot of software as well, but as a major, you know, semiconductor manufacturer out of the Netherlands, uh, you're a leader in the, you know, open hardware movement. You play a strong role in RISC-V, it was, it was one of the projects here uh, in Switzerland. Um, how do you think the Linux Foundation Europe can accelerate, you know, Risk Five, and you know, more broadly, the, the open hardware conversation, which is becoming more and more, you know, central to the open collaboration? Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to drive uh, the the ecosystem, especially yep. the software ecosystem. It'll be an accelerant to that. I think. Uh, when we when we started interacting with Risk Five Foundation, uh, I was on the board in the early days, and one of the things I was pushing for way back then was a, a software ecosystem. No, yep. no real ISA is is going to be successful without a strong software ecosystem around it. And so, uh, and, and under Calissa's leadership and the Linux yep. Foundation, they've come a long way in driving that that software enablement, that software ecosystem. And so we're, I think they're in an excellent place today. But I do think having a dedicated foundation out here will accelerate that on the software side. And also even on the hardware side, uh, there's, there's open hardware implementations now com yep. coming out of organizations like Open Hardware Group where uh, you know, they, they literally have a, an implementation of 32-bit RISC-V cores that are available to everybody developed by professional engineers with professional design tools. You know, this, it's not a... Uh, kind of a, a European, or I'm sorry, yep. a, a more of a university-centric thing. It's, it's a professionally developed implementation. I think that's going to will accelerate with this foundation's uh, leadership going forward. So, no pressure. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Rob. That that, that was really interesting. I, I do think there's a there's a huge potential for open source to really bridge um, here. Um, Vaso, I'll, I'll go back to you. Um, you know, of course, you represent SAP. 
uh, SAP if one, is one of the, you know, probably if not the largest uh, um, software vendor in Europe. Uh, you know, you guys have a long history with open source. Um, where do you see, you know, which areas do you see, you know, having the most potential for, for Linux Foundation Europe to support regional collaboration? Well, as we said, you know, bring it to the global scale. So maybe let me start with an observation. So in Europe, we have a lot of companies, small, medium-sized, large companies, which are actually regional, if not also global yep. um, champions, right? Yep. But um, they have actually a strong tradition rather in industry, that means think manufacturing, think automotive, and yep. so on, rather than a, you know, historically coming from an IT or software uh, perspective, right? And so in the last decades, we were seeing this, um, this digital transformation, and these companies are now becoming software companies as such yep. uh, themselves. And, and with that move, actually, uh, these companies need to become, um, because it's natural now, um, need to become more competent in managing open source itself, right? Um, and uh, I can actually confirm that uh, from another perspective because many of these uh, companies are actually SAP's customers because yeah. we actually provided the software during the past 50 years to run relevant parts of their businesses, right? Yep. And so we have a very trustful relationship with many of these customers. We have customer advisory boards and uh, um, strategic councils and so on. And uh, our open source program office, which we also created um, um, very early on, yeah, uh, gets contacted by actually these customers and these companies on the questions of best practices uh, and, and um, yeah, of, of uh, open source. Yeah? Yep. Uh, can you share your um, internal uh, guidelines on how to contribute? And the easy questions uh, yep. sometimes, but also very complex questions in how do we achieve investment security in an open source project, yep. right? Um, so um, overall, um, when, um, uh, when you take a look at, um, at, at this type of uh, thing, it, we here in this audience, you know, we are light years ahead with respect to open source, yep. and most of the companies are just on the pathway to this trajectory. Yep. So, I think one of the best ways, and it connects also later, um, is, is if, I, if I may uh, take that analogy of a, path, a paved road, right? Uh, you got to enable these companies to actually, with best practices, with open source program office, so that we, we not only, you not only create a road across, um, across Europe, but you make these companies uh, post a road sign um, for, their, uh, for yeah. their employees that here, this is the ramp up to the open source road, right? Yep. Which also has, a, you know, a, a transatlantic uh, yes. bridge or a global bridge, right? And um, that, in essence, because now you've got these companies to, 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 you yeah, um, are, they're enabled with open source, the open source idea, and so on, and and with open source becoming also more prevalent in um, in the. Um, uh, in the legislative and in the yep. policy making process, you now have companies advocating for this type of digital commons. I think yep. that's like the biggest lever that the Linux Foundation Europe can pull towards open source, right? Yeah. Lasse, this is so, um, so interesting. I mean, the idea of, of you collab not only collaborating with your customers, but really being a open source coach in yeah. a way for your customers, it, it's really fascinating and, and there are some um, altruistic motives behind that. No, as absolutely. Well, right? um, I, I, I think you know the Linux Foundation and the Todo Group is, are doing a fantastic job in trying to sort of further you know uh, OSPOs, but you know having real large you know uh, uh, companies promoting that as well it does it does make wonders. Yeah, it reminds me, we, we are actually SAP is the co-founder of the, the of group. the European chapter of the Todo Group. Right. Shameless plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you touched on, on digital commons, so let me move to, to Satchiko. Uh, uh, you know, Open Forum Europe is, is the leading policy advocate uh, uh, for open collaboration, open source at, at Europe level. We, we're very thankful and supportive of, of your work. 
Uh, you guys released an amazing report last year uh, in terms of the open source sort of impact at policy level. Uh, it uncovered several areas for the EU, um, you know, to further foster a commercial ecosystem and achieve uh, sort of its goals through open source. Uh, where do you think, you know, an entity like Linux Foundation Europe, uh, you know, coming to the landscape can accelerate, you know, outcomes, measurable outcomes in this space? Right. Um, Easy question, no? Yeah. <laughs> just trying to keep everything in my, in my head there. Um, and also, you know, just coming in after Vasu there, because there are many things that you said that I definitely, uh, you know, could, could echo and, and, and agree, agree with. Um, but if I take a slightly different perspective, I, I know, Gab, that you value research. Yes. And I think that, you know, you're going to have uh, research insight really guide your, your, your program for, yep. for LF Europe. And I think... This is also very valuable um, for, for us um, to be able to have um, research that's based on the European situation um, and to bring that to, to the people that we speak to. Uh, and you mentioned the study that we did uh, for the European Commission. It was together with Fraunhofer. Yep. Um, and indeed, uh, the assignment there was to quantify the economic value that open source brings to Europe. And I think... Um, that's, that's, of course, really valuable when you can p point to sort of uh, to a figure which even uh, though it was kind of a, a moderate estimate still amounted to, to, to a big, uh, yeah. a big, a lot, There's a lot. Some yeah. impressive numbers. Exactly, yeah. some imp impressive numbers. And, and so, so that opens the door a little bit to policymakers. Why should they be speaking to us? Why, you know, why is this important? And, you know, especially when they saw that it contributes a lot already, but there is a room uh, to grow this and, and to benefit even further for the European economy. Uh, and so I think, you know, um, the research that you are going to, you know, to do in other Europe and, and, and present, um, I think that kind of um, helps us with the next step. Because policymakers, you know, first you have to open the door. You want to have, you know, show that you you represent a credible, uh, you know, important stakeholders, uh, and then they say, uh, and so what? Okay, what can we do to 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 really reap the benefits? Then yep. you need further insight to really show um, what the opportunities are, what the blockers are, etc., so that you can um, you can come with suggestions for for sort of evidence-based uh, policy making. And so the research, I really, you know, looking forward to see to seeing more of that. Um, and um, and then, you know, Vasu, you talked about, you know, this this need to kind of, uh, you know, it's not just the regulatory um, need maybe to have a European ent entity, but also to, to overcome certain psychological barriers yes. mm -hmm. to reaching out to, you know, to the international level might be a difficult first step uh, for for a public sector official in you know, in Sweden or whatever, yep. and they, in they, when they think about, um, a, a, you know, a project to collaborate on, etc. So I think that's going to be very, very valuable. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think the perception aspect yes. is also important, you know, yeah. that can be ob oblivious to it. Um, last but not least, uh, uh, Phil, um, you are not only, of course, one of the largest manufacturers in Europe, but you also sit on the Linux Foundation Board. You guys are uh, our you know, you're a platinum member for uh, 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 Linux Foundation Europe. Can you share a bit more color, you know, about the value, just really at the left level, uh, to expand its operation in Europe, you know, both with your Ericsson and sort of Linux Foundation hat on? Sure, sure. Um, I think f what I've seen within the board um, over the past two or three years is clearly a pent-up demand for a European entity be it sovereignty as one of the key issues, or again, just the regionalness um, of the efforts being done, uh, not only in Telco and in the spaces where Ericsson has, has actively participated, but across the different industry segments, as, as Vasu said. Um, so I see that pent up demand. And what that really means is that without this, there's been an inhibitor to growth. Yep. Um, and so there's just an opportunity for more collaboration uh, starting and being founded out of Europe that, that doesn't exist today. Um, and uh, Ericsson for quite a while has been involved with uh, a small nonprofit working on um, uh, a regional area and, uh, and we know of others as well. And I can tell you that, you know, starting a nonprofit is around open source um, support is hard. Um, it's really hard to do. Yep. 
Uh, and when you think about when you think about the Linux Foundation and what they've done, you know, developing software and doing it in a collaborative, uh, level playing field way are you know the mantras of what most of the folks in this audience do. Um, but there's a tremendous amount of support that uh, becomes uh, becomes known and be, and becomes really obvious once it's there. Right, a small organization, a small nonprofit supporting some uh, outfit, you know, getting an event together is hard. Doing this is hard. Getting everybody together, um, having training is hard. Doing research is hard. Yep. These all take, you know, and this is, you know, you talk about a, a highway uh, or a freeway, a paved road from which to build. You know, it just makes doing the software all that much easier. Uh, having all of that infrastructure, be it statistics for the management to know how things are going, to the research, yep. to the, you know, you don't think about those things in the context often of writing software, but that's really the value of what a nonprofit like the Linux Foundation brings is, is the rest of that, right, and the rest of the people around. And like I said, I see there's been an inhibitor to doing that kind of growth and collaboration in Europe, and so I'm quite excited, both as a board member and as, uh, and as a, a member of Ericsson for watching this grow. That's amazing. We, uh, I'm excited as well. Um, folks, I want to thank you so much for coming here and, and sort of sharing your very different perspectives uh, for Linux Foundation Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bump. <laughs> OK. Um, we are going to move to oops, the next slide. Um, so where do we go from here? Uh, um, first of all, you've heard this morning uh, the Open Wallet announcement. This is our first intent to form a project under LF Europe. But we will be, of course, continuing to nurture some of those projects that are Europe strong. Uh, I talked about creating an advisory board. My first and foremost priority is to listen and learn from the community. Um, you know, uh, of course, I grew up here. It's been a while uh, that I don't live here. Uh, uh, and so I want to make sure that we hear from you what are the priorities and the challenges that we should be focusing on. Um, and sort of Sachiko hinted at it, uh, but I want Linux Foundation Europe to be not only community driven, but data driven. And just so it happens that we have our VP of research, Hilary Carter, uh, presenting some exciting results for our European research. Hilary, come on stage. Thank you, Gab. Good morning, Open Source Summit. I am absolutely delighted to be here. Cade Mila Falcha. It's wonderful to be in Dublin, not only to connect with my Irish heritage, but to describe the important work that the Linux Foundation is doing uh, to create um, data-driven insights that influence not only the launch of uh, LF Europe, but that can benefit the entire open source landscape. So let's give you a little bit of background about how this all unfolded. About six months ago, at LF Research, we realized that we needed a new framework uh, through which to explore open source dynamics, looking through a geographic lens. And so we launched a new series, which we've called World of Open Source, looking at open source dynamics at the global level, at the continental level, at the regional level, and maybe even the country level. And so all of our research projects that uh, have a geographic aspect to it and provide insight at this regional level will be released under the World of Open Source banner. Our inaugural project was launched for Europe in Europe at KubeCon, uh, Cloud Native Con Europe in Valencia, Spain in May, we launched the World of Open Source Europe Spotlight 2022 survey. We're extremely pleased to have worked with 15 European distribution partners who helped us widely distribute the survey across the European continent to ensure that we would get a robust sample size. I'm extremely grateful to all of our survey distribution partners who hail from academia, private enterprise, and the developer and uh, open source uh, contributor communities. Together, 
we had more than 1,000 people start the survey, 750 of which completed all of the questions specific to open source consumption, 670 made it all the way through the survey. So a real team effort, and that enabled us to conduct some exciting analysis, and we're, and we're extremely pleased with the results, how they influence our activities and programming in Europe, and it's something that we can all uh, benefit from. So if you took the survey, if you're one of our distribution partners, I say a sincere thanks to all of you. So here's the culmination of our collective work. I'm so pleased today to be publishing World of Open Source 2022 Europe Spotlight. Please take out your phone, scan the QR code, download the report, and distribute it to everybody you know. I'd also like to say a very special thank you to our research partners, particularly the team at Scott Logic, Colin Eberhard, Graham Odds, and Matt Dunderdale, who co-authored this report and conducted 16 interviews with subject matter experts all across of Europe, all across Europe, excuse me, enabling for a much richer perspective. And these interviews validated many of the findings uh, from the survey. So dig in, uh, share widely, and uh, let us know what you think. I'm going to share a few uh, findings today, uh, just a few. This happy face is here for a reason. And our survey results reveal that once again, open source is an environment that is a fun and enriching space to be in. It's also an environment our survey respondents feel is a place where they can learn new skills. And that's consistent with other research that we've done across the Linux Foundation. Our research also shows that open source remains an apolitical key to fostering the digital commons, not only enabling innovation that can take place in Europe, but those innovations then go on to become de facto standards used throughout the world, validating very much uh, the opportunities that Gab described earlier. A majority of our survey respondents uh, have policies that openly uh, encourage uh, consumption of open source technologies. However, there is an imbalance with respect to back, uh, upstream contribution, and that does uh, uh, create some challenges with respect to the sustainability of open source communities. Upstream contribution is consistently a challenge that we need to work uh, to help overcome. And finally, our, our research revealed some industry-specific challenges, most notably that the public sector is not fully realizing the value of open source. Um, only 29% of public sector respondents um, have policies that openly encourage uh, open source um, contribution. And that was well below the survey mean of 46%. If you'd like to um, dig into the research findings a little bit more, we have a dedicated uh, session this afternoon. Please join us at 2.20 in Wicklow Meeting Room 3. I'll be there. I'll be joined by Gab, uh, Colin Eberhard, who led the research report, and Sachiko Muto from Open Forum Europe, who's done some excellent uh, research, as you heard previously. And uh, we'll dig into the research findings and the methodology in greater detail this afternoon. So with that, um, as I say in Irish Gaelic, Guru Mahagat, I'll see you throughout the week. Thank you very much for all of your support of Linux Foundation research. Thank you so much, Hilary. Um, yeah, to what uh, Rob was talking before, when I started Finos, I didn't have the luxury to have a research department to help me uh, uh, you know, drive the strategy. So this is just unique uh, for us as Linux Foundation. So uh, let me wrap. Uh, our vision is to engage with you as a community, uh, advocate for Europe's strong collaboration, and bring them to a global scale. Um, and if you, you know, are not convinced as to why you should care, uh, I think, as I mentioned before, there's a value whether you are an individual contributor uh, the Linux Foundation is about open governance and is about, you know, trying to potentially supercharge your project to make it on the global scale. And as I said, we'd love to hear from you of influencing uh, 
uh, the direction and the focus of Linux Foundation in Europe. But if you are a corporate contributor, uh, um, you know, you have the opportunity to join, you know, worldwide technology leaders shaping the future of open source, um, addressing your challenges, whether it's industry specific, vertical, or on a certain layer of the stack, or even in a certain country or region. Um, and of course, foster a sustainable ecosystem, open source sustainability, uh, you know, we all have a part to play there. And then finally, uh, some of the research has really uncovered opportunity on the public sector side of the house to really use open source as a high longevity tool to drive uh, social goals, policy goals, and really collective innovation. Uh, our goal is going to be to make sure that not only uh, the why is understood, but also the how through open governance we can make this uh, valuable for each of the constituents of the industry. Uh, but still thinking global from the outset. And so, oops, with that, a uh, couple of QR codes there. Uh, Linuxfoundation.eu is our new website. Uh, you can join, uh, you can host a project. And of course, in case you missed it, make sure that you download our uh, World of Open Source European report. Would love to hear your feedback and, you know, areas of collaboration that it potentially sparks. With that, thank you so much, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you.